So this video is going to be a lot of me yapping about a bunch of pagan shit. But it's also what you people have been asking for, so you have only yourselves to blame. I find that there's a lot of confusion about polytheists and, and pagans as far as what we believe. And part of the issue is that trying to find out what we believe through the Google is a daunting and confusing task, rife with search results that give a variety of strange and even contradictory responses. And to somebody that has no idea about polytheism or paganism or any of our traditions, this can result in just a quick dismissal. Or worse, it can result in simply finding information that confirms one's previously held biases. So every once in a while, I get sent questions about paganism in general. And questions about paganism in general are really difficult to answer because there's so damn many different kinds of us. But I got sent a list of questions from a Christian that I thought were interesting, and I want to answer a few of them, and maybe this can be helpful. But to preface, I am one polytheist. There are many perspectives. I'm just one of them. So first, is there a generalized belief among pagans? And the answer to this is not really, uh, except that we respect each other's distinct journeys. Pagans aren't even universally polytheist, and even if a vast majority of pagan traditions are polytheist, depending on how one defines pagan, one might include atheopagans, who don't even hold a deity belief of any kind. Wiccans are considered pagan, for example, but their traditions include polytheism, duotheism, atheism, and apatheism, and a number of other perspectives. Obviously, this results in a myriad of beliefs that don't exactly line up with one another, despite all of them being Wiccan. So for the purposes of simplicity, and the fact that I'm speaking as a polytheist, I'm going to switch these questions from being about pagans to being about polytheists, in part because... Uh, it changes these questions from being unanswerable to answerable, uh, in part because my channel is about my perspective as a polytheist and as a heathen. So that being said, there are several generalized beliefs among polytheists. Chief among them is that there are multiple gods um, and that spirituality is worth pursuing. Many of us also hold that there is a validity to personal religious experience that people can explore for themselves through praxis. And some polytheists hold a value and authority among historical practice, though this is not always the case. And a second question. Uh, do the desires of polytheist gods conflict? Now, there are several instances in our legends of conflicting desires of deity. The kidnapping of Vidun uh, is one such example of the clash of desires between the Aesir and the Jotun. And the legend of the war between the Aesir and the Vanir is another big example. Uh, Odin, too, has, in many instances, differences of desire between himself and various Jotun. Uh, disagreement famously appears between Thor and Loki in numerous stories. This would be a problem if we had omnipotent gods in the same sense as Christians defined them, but for this reason, I hold that the gods are not omnipotent. Uh, a contact of mine who's a polytheist philosopher, however, has he's got a wealth more education in philosophy than I do, he holds that the gods are omnipotent. But in a different sense than Christians hold, he makes the point that the, the result of disagreements among the gods is in line with their will. And this is a concept that I haven't personally explored enough to understand it myself. It's, uh, it fits under a philosophy called Neoplatonism. Uh, suffice to say that my friend is justified in his position, despite my holding a different position. And our holding different positions doesn't fall prey to any sort of salvation standard. So both of us can hold that the other is engaging in a justified praxis with deity, even if our ontologies of deity are different. Uh, Cicero, kind of, he explores this in um, his text, uh, The Nature of the Gods, which goes into competing images of deity through an often aggressive dialogue between philosophers with respect to their concepts of deity. And Cicero points out that there is logically only one fact of the matter regarding deity, even if that fact of the matter is that they don't exist. Uh, he also points out that there's many ways of viewing deity, that are rooted in logic and reason, and are therefore rational. So there are multiple rational positions that may or may not be the true position. But we don't know what the true position is because of our limitations. And so spirited debate and discussion is not only allowed, but it's encouraged. That being said, uh, the answer to this question depends very much on your ontology of deity. For me, the answer is yes, the gods conflict with one another, as does nature, as do humans. But 
that conflict does not amount to a logical contradiction, just as humans getting into an argument does not cause them to disappear by virtue of their disagreement. Uh, and just as fire may burn and ice may freeze, but throwing an ice cube into a bonfire doesn't result in the universe imploding in a logical contradiction. The uh, third question was, do all polytheists believe that gods interact with the modern world? And most questions to start off with, do all polytheists believe, are going to have the answer with, I'm just, it's going to be no. Um, but in my experience here, polytheists generally do believe that the gods interact with the modern world. We don't hold to an age of miracles like some Christians do, or, and even then, like the idea of miracles as an override of natural law seems a little absurd to many polytheists. In fact, polytheists that believe in more eminent gods, gods that are like part of the universe, there's no reason why the gods would need to override natural law, as that would be essentially the gods overriding the gods. Uh, what happens in accordance with natural law is also in accordance with the gods. So the answer to the question of like how the gods interact with the modern world, that can become a discussion on ontology, as previously stated. But the simple question of do they can be answered generally with a yes from polytheists. There becomes a disagreement on how that's explained. Uh, even Epicureans, who believe that the gods interact with the universe, according to Cicero, they just don't think that they have a lot of interest in humans. Stoics, on the other hand, uh, believe that the gods interact with the universe, but are indeed interested in humans. So it's a little bit different there. But both still believe that the gods are interacting with the universe, despite their disagreement on whether or not they're interested in humans. So there's a lot of explanations that would be rational, however not verifiable, which is indicative of the limitations that we have in having this conversation in the first place. And one issue that I have with Christianity was when they assert some kind of knowledge in how they're perfect gods or God, depending on what kind of heretical Trinitarian you are, interacts with the world despite the fact that so many of them disagree with each other. Uh, so the last question on this list is, how do you know your god constitutes worship? Which I would correct as gods. And this question is is super Christian. <laughs> and I get, it, I get it a lot from them. Uh, sometimes from atheists, but not as often. Worship is a really weird word to use because of how Christians have contextualized it as this like act of total submission. And I can't speak as plainly for other traditions, but heathens, simply defined as Germanic polytheists, will hold the gods in reverence and respect and will engage in ritual and reciprocity with the gods. We really like the letter R. And that all the gods are worthy of this exchange which is distinct from this like total submission thing that Christians kind of engage with. Uh, so worship in the heathen context is on the basis of, of the person and whether or not they want to engage with a particular deity. So for example, if you wish to engage with Tyr, a justice god, or Saga, a storytelling goddess, or Skathi, uh, a winter and hunting goddess, you would be the one to decide to engage with that deity and make an offering. So it very much depends on the person, and the context of their spiritual journey. There's no absolute standard that constitutes which god is to be worshipped by you today. Honestly, it can be summed up this way. There are the gods, and there is you. And what action you take in light of that is on you. So what are some of your questions? Um, I've got some videos in the pipeline, but I'm interested in seeing what you guys want me to tackle. So uh, should be a few questions. And maybe I'll answer some stuff in the comments, and maybe it'll be something that requires a video. So just let me know. Um, connect with me. Uh, again, I'm Ocean Keltoy on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Uh, and a shout out to my patrons, man. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and uh, ring the ring that bell thing. Um, if you want to support the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon, join the Turtle Army, and uh, get behind the scenes posts for each video. And thanks for watching. And remember to find a way or make one. Mm -hmm.